Hey guys, this is Andy and Eric with Mole Must Have, and today we're gonna go over the pep wave in tennis. So yeah, these come in a couple different variants, but um, they were formerly known as the Puma antenna, um, and they had to change their name uh, for one reason or another. Now they're like called the 42G for well, one it model. It depends on what you're yeah, getting. But we're just yeah. gonna call them the, the pep wave omnidirectional roof antennas. It's very simple, they, they don't have any other versions in this kind of format, yeah, so that's what they, they are. They come in different variants for different types of modems, and we'll get into that, and they come in different colors, so you can get a black and a white, very, very yeah. unique. Today we've got two very popular variants. Uh, this is a five-in-one antenna, and this is a seven-in-one antenna, and Andy's gonna talk about the five-in-one. Yeah. Now, they come in both colors, so I'm showing white, but it comes in black, and that one's black, comes in white, uh, but this is gonna be the five-in-one. It is a six-foot cable, um, and it has um, our SM, the cellular side, they're SMA cables. On the Wi-Fi side, they're RPSMA, which just means reverse polarity. They just swap the center pin around. And that way you can't put the wrong one in the wrong spot. So yeah. it's actually, it works out quite well. A lot of folks think that the pin's missing or that there's something wrong with the modem. It's not, it's designed that way on purpose. But this will match up for just about any single modem pep wave device. Yeah, and these are really great in terms of, you can see they're very low profile, they're very good small size. The 701 is gonna be a bit bigger. It's got more antennas, so. Um, but the 5-in-1 is nice and small. You've got a couple options for mounting. Um, as always, kind of a very common one is just to surface mount it on the top. You have a removable slash optional adhesive mount that's on the bottom, which is great. Um, and it's removable because if you wanted to go with the pole mount that is included, you don't need, obviously, the adhesive, so you can pole mount it. Now, if you are going to go surface mount with this, though, there is going to be kind of this twisting, locking nut on the bottom depending on the type. uses everybody. Yeah, depending <laughs> on the type of RV, it might not work for you, and that's okay. That's what the adhesive part is for. So don't panic if that if that doesn't fit. Yeah, um, typically your RV roof's gonna be about four to six inches thick. Yeah, mine's um, six, so. Yeah. yeah, and both of us have had antennas adhere directly to the roof with the cables going straight down with an adhesive mount. Yeah, with this 3M. With yeah. a Dicor ring, no locking nut, just letting gravity and that adhesive uh, tape do its job and have had no issues for five plus years. It's a yeah. very common way to install um, in, in, in mobile, mobile uh, RV applications. Yeah, so this is, a, this is a really great option. Again, this is a five-in-one, so your typical uh, modems are going to be like the BR1 MK2, that is a category six. It basically has two LTE, two Wi-Fi, and a GPS, and that's what this is lined up for. If you're doing a single category 12 modem kind of combination, this would work well too for that. Um, so it's got a great kind of flexibility to it. Yeah, so a couple little geeked out on spec stuff. These mo these do support 600 megahertz. So for folks that are interested in T-Mobile's rural band, uh, it will support that. And they are 5G compatible as well for future proofing. Uh, but again, five and then stepping up into the seven, I'll talk about now. Yeah, go for it. All right, so yeah, we're talking quite a bit bigger. This is um, about eight inches in diameter, eight to nine inches, and this one's closer to five. Yeah. Significantly uh, larger size, but still a good uh, size antenna for how much they're packing into here. Um, if you do want to look at a seven in one that's smaller than this, uh, Mobile Mark's pretty much the place to go, but we'll, we'll focus on, on this one, uh, which has, from a feature perspective, a very similar uh, set of stuff. So we've got our removable adhesive mount here, uh, we've got our locking nut here, we have the pole mount option. We include screws uh, to mount the pole mount to the bottom of the antenna. And then they also include a, um, basically a band connector for doing the pole mount uh, as well. There's also some uh, screw um, and, and, and mollies for if you wanna do a wall mount application, which you can actually do as well with this pole mount. Um, that's probably gonna be more for a fixed uh, rural home application, but it is, it is doable. Um, Stepping up into the seven and one, you're gonna have four cellular leads. So now you can use this antenna with category 18, category 20, you know, transit 5G, uh, other 5G modems, and this will be our one of pro 5G. Yeah. yeah. So we've got four cellular leads, two Wi-Fi leads, and one GPS lead, all in a very nice compact Now, now Eric, profile. one thing we always forget. Now, what about ground planes with these? Ah, good question. Uh, the technical answer is no. Uh, on the spec sheet from Pepwave, they say a ground plane is not required, however, if you are in a roof mounting situation where you can add one, I'm sure it's not gonna hurt. Uh, to give folks kind of a 
quick understanding of ground planes, we're talking about a piece of ferrous metal underneath the antenna, usually somewhere around 16 inches in diameter or something. And what it's basically doing is it's helping the cell signal bounce up into the antenna. It's not grounded to the frame or anything to do with electrical. No. Uh, can't get confusing because some CB radio stuff works with grounding. Nothing like that. It's just a metal uh, circle plate that helps bounce the signal into the antenna. But again, not required according to Pepper. And of course, if you have a metal roof, definitely don't need one because yeah. that's the whole point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. In terms of gain specifications and kind of performance, uh, we've had pretty good luck with these in testing. Um, they're not performing quite as high as uh, like our, our Parsec um, Husky antenna, which mm -hmm. also is bigger. So, I, you know, I give them credit. They made it into a smaller footprint. Um, but um, if you want, there are specification sheets in the listing under the documentation tab, or we highly recommend that you check out the Mobile Internet Resource Center at rvmobileinternet.com. Uh, they are actively uh, testing out uh, this and a couple other antennas all the time. Um, oh, and they give you big listings of their reports based on locations and cell signal grabs versus and comparisons. It's yep. a really great resource. Shout out you. to Chris Shuri and Andy, uh, their Andy, there. <laughs> who uh, does quite a bit of antenna testing um, and helps us out to make sure we get you guys all the best and latest information about here's the specs, but here's what we're seeing in the real world. Yeah. All right, so that's pretty much it. This is kind of the uh, formerly Puma, now 42G, and and uh, and other omnidirectional pep wave antenna overviews. All right, guys, so if you have any questions, feel free to hit us on chat on our website or shoot us an email at info at mobilemusthave.com, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye.